Standard costing is the first managerial accounting idea we're going to tackle. And you see, standard costing is all about standardizing the cost of creating a product. You see, it takes all the direct costs. Direct costs are costs that you can track that go to the direct final product. Things such as labor, number of hours kind of thing, supplies, which is like the raw materials and how much it costs to buy those, and certain other activities such as maybe even factory overhead if you can allocate it correctly. And you see, standard costing uses these direct costs to create an expected budget for the future. Now, that was a lot. A lot of big words and a little confusion there, I'm sure. But all you have to remember right now is that standard costing helps you create budgets. The main reason that people use standard costing is because it's usually somewhat impossible to create normal costing. You see, standard costing is all about creating expected costs for the future. Since it's impossible to know exactly how much money you're gonna spend in the future, random stuff occurs, standardized costing is the next best option. You see, standardized costing looks at what happened in the past and projects that forward using an expected cost. So while you may not pay the same that you did this last time, next year, you have an idea of how many hours you're gonna pay your employees or how much total supplies you're gonna buy. Those prices might change, but you have the idea on the volume. Or it could be reverse. Maybe you know the prices are going to stay the same, but you might create more stuff in the future. So the volume might change. You see, those are the two main inputs for standard costing, volume and price. If you can get an idea of how much something's gonna cost you and how much of it you're gonna buy or use, then you can have an idea of what your future costs are going to look like then you can create budgets around that. For example, let's say that I sell TVs. Next year I plan on selling 100 TVs. How much is that gonna cost me? To figure that out, I need a few pieces of information. I need to know how much it's gonna cost me for labor and how much it's gonna cost me for materials. Let's say that I know it's gonna cost me $10 in materials per TV I make. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. 100 times 10, $1,000 in materials for next year. So in order to make 100 TVs, it's gonna cost me $1,000 in materials. That's half the equation. The other half is labor. Now labor has a, two different kind of folds to it. One, kind of how many man hours is it gonna to take to make a TV? And then two, how much am I gonna pay them per hour? Let's say that it, we know it takes my workers one hour to make a TV and I pay them $10 an hour. Well, that makes pretty easy math. One hour per TV times 100 is 100 total hours to make 100 TVs. Multiply that by the $10 per hour I pay my employees and we once get get $1,000. So we have $1,000 in materials, $1,000 in labor to make 100 TVs. In total, it's gonna to cost me $2,000. Now, that doesn't sound too bad, right? Per TV, what's 2,000 divided by 100? 20 bucks. That can help me decide, okay, what should I price each TV at? It can also help me decide, okay, do I have $2,000 laying around that I can invest into the company next year in order to make 100 TVs? Or do I have enough cash on hand? We talked a little bit about this and cash flows. Do I have enough cash in order to make that investment now or do I need to get a loan so that I can make that investment and then I can sell TVs and make money off that loan? See, these are all big decisions that people need to understand when they manage a company. They need to understand how to make that future budget and then what parts of that budget may change. You see, what if I get a worker strike and now instead of paying them $10 per hour, it goes up to $20 per hour. Well, now my budget's gonna be off and that $2,000 turns into $3,000. Uh-oh, that may be an issue. And so when you usually create budgets like this, you do a high, medium, and low. And so the low is usually what you expected and that's based on what happened last year. So that $10 per hour, one hour per employee, $10 per materials, for that kind of $20 per TV cost. That's usually gonna probably be on the low side because you know that's what happened last year, so you can kind of expect that to happen this year. The medium side is, okay, let's say one of those things changed, such as my employees started saying, hey, we don't wanna get paid $10 an hour anymore, we wanna get paid $20 an hour. Okay, so you need to have a little bit of flexibility in there. If you understand your company and you understand kind of what business forces are facing your company, such as maybe higher wages or higher supplier costs, higher material costs, things like that, you can make those kind of guesstimates on what might change. That kind of goes in that mid category. Then of course, the high category is what's if a worst case scenario happened? So what if both my suppliers and my employees really ratcheted up the price on me? And let's say that employees said, hey, we're only working for $100 an hour. Or let's say that my suppliers were like, hey, we're only gonna sell you these materials at $100 per TV. That's gonna be a big change. 
Due to those changes, you have to be able to understand that businesses have flexibility in their budgets. That's the problem with standard costing. You see, standard costing is all about expectations, and usually expectations are not exact, and they're not perfect. So because of that, you always have to look back on how well your expected costs were relative to your actual costs. That's kind of the final step in standardized costing, is that you actually go back and you compare, okay, I expected to spend $20 per TV. How much did I actually spend per TV last year? And you look into it and say, maybe you really spent $30 per TV. Okay, I need to adjust my expectations for next year's budgets. As long as you make that final step, you'll have a better understanding of how standardized costing is affecting your company and how to make it more accurate in the future. Remember, standardized costing is just one way managerial accounting can help business managers make better decisions. Standardized costing is all about building out budgets for the future. Just so you have a good idea of what's going on, it kind of helps you understanding what you did in the past and use that information to make future expectations. Standardized costing is not perfect, but it can get you close, as long as you're paying attention to the main business forces affecting your company. In order to do standardized costing, you need to understand the price and volume that goes into each part of your process and those direct costs that go into your product. Labor, man hours, how much you're paying them per hour. On the supply side, it's gonna be material costs, maybe machinery, equipment costs. And to some extent, you may even wanna take things into consideration such as factory overhead or rent or electric bills, utility bills, things of that nature as well. To be able to excel at standardized costing, you have to truly understand your product and what it takes to create your product in order to create future expected budgets, which is what standardized costing is all about when it's all said and done. Now, I know that was a lot, but hopefully you understand how companies can create future budgets now and maybe have some ideas in your own mind about how your company can make future budgets more accurate.